How's it going, everyone? Welcome back into the channel. So a bunch of the Packers coaches had their press conferences today ahead of this week five Monday night football game in Las Vegas versus the Raiders. And we started to get a little bit of an update on cornerback Eric Stokes, who is eligible to start practicing again this week. After we saw in the preseason, he was placed on the PUP with his lower leg injuries. This is the week he is allowed to start practicing again, and we could potentially see him activated here in the near future. So in today's video, I want to go over the Eric Stokes injury updates as well as just kind of give an outlook on that cornerback room right now for the Packers. But before we dive into this injury update, first, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, Mojo Fantasy, who I'm partnering up with to give away this signed Lucas Van Ness full size Packers helmet. I'm super excited to give this helmet away. Thank you to Mojo Fantasy. And you might be asking yourself, what is Mojo Fantasy? Well, Mojo Fantasy is fantasy sports meets stock market. Player props act like stocks and you can buy and sell at any point, even during the game. So for example, in that Lions game, say you took over 65 and a half rushing yards for Aaron Jones. Then through the first two drives, saw the Packers not give him a single carry. You could actually sell that prop and get some of your money back, or you could simply let it ride and see if they end up, you know, giving him the ball, which they didn't do. And he didn't get up to 65 and a half yards. It's the only fantasy app that allows you to make moves after the game starts. So you're not stuck with a bad pick all game. So the way you get in on entering in this signed full-size Lucas Van Ness helmet, as well as get in on all the cool prop bets they have over on Mojo Fantasy, is download the Mojo Fantasy app using the link down in the description below or using my promo code BASS, that's B-A-S. That'll enter you in this Lucas Van Ness full-size signed helmet giveaway just by downloading the app. Using my link also gives you a 100% deposit match up to $100 on Mojo Fantasy. So if you deposit $5, you'll have 10 in your account. If you deposit $100, you'll have 200 in your account. So don't wait, go down in my description, click the link to download Mojo Fantasy today. All right, so now let's dive right into the Eric Stokes injury update. And first we have a tweet from Tom Silverstein saying, LaFleur said a decision on whether to bring cornerback Eric Stokes back from PUP will come soon. Quote, he has missed a lot of time, but he's also played a lot of ball, so we'll see. He said of how quickly Stokes could be ready once he's practicing again. So that sounds like a very positive outlook look on Eric Stokes from Matt LaFleur. Usually Matt LaFleur is kind of drawn back from a lot of that type of stuff in injury regard. So anytime he's asked about an injury, he really doesn't give much. But for LaFleur to even say that how quickly Stokes could be back once he starts practicing is, is a very, very good sign. Because as of right now, the cornerback room is very, very banged up. Jair Alexander with the back injury didn't play against the Saints, didn't play against last week against the Lions. Hopefully Jair is ready this week. I really want to see him versus Devonta Adams. I think all all of us want to see Jair against Devonta Adams, and hopefully Joe Barry allows him to just shadow Devonta Adams, which I wouldn't be too surprised if he didn't, even if Jair was healthy. And Lafleur did say he's not overly concerned with the severity of Jair Alexander's back injury, so hopefully that does mean he will be back this week. We'll get a better tell on his availability during this week's practices, so be on the lookout for all those updates on this channel as well. Packers defensive coordinator Joe Barry was also asked about Eric Stokes, and he said he's eager for cornerback Eric Stokes to get back, and when he does, he'll incorporate him as fast as possible. Quote, you can never have too many corners, end quote, he said. Not only is Jair Alexander on the injury report, we also saw Carrington Valentine with his biceps injury after he left the game early against the Saints. He did play against the Lions, but didn't even play as many snaps as Corey Valentine, a practice squad call-up who's actually been pretty impressive since the Packers have called him up. But nonetheless, the Packers are pretty banged up at that cornerback spot. And even if everyone was healthy, it's still going to be a great addition to bring Eric Stokes back into that room. A room that honestly has been playing pretty poorly to start this season. And it's kind of a shock to me because I thought that was one of their stronger groups on defense. I thought safety would struggle a lot more than cornerback. And it's kind of been the other way around. If we go ahead and bring up uh, the PFF grades through four weeks for the Green Bay Packers at cornerback, we see Rasul Douglas really the only good playing cornerback so far this year with a 74.9. Now he did get beat a lot uh, against the Lions last week. So, so that definitely hurt his grade even more. But if we go into Rasul Douglas, we see here besides last week he's had a pretty good uh, season thus far 75.7 against the Saints a 68.6 against the uh, Falcons and a 
35.7 um, against the Bears. Just a bad game against Detroit, and we all saw that. That passed the eye test, that grade there, a 57.5. Then looking at all the other cornerbacks here on PFF, and his gains only has five total snaps, so not really looking at him there. Jair Alexander uh, has played two total games and has a really poor PFF grade when we're looking at what we're used to seeing with Jair, a 62.5 grade there. Carrington Valentine, who had a really hot preseason and training camp, also a poor grade, even worse than Jair's here, and he's played four games, less snaps, but overall four games, a 57.1. Keyshawn Nixon had a couple good games, but also a couple really poor games. He has a 59.7 here. And then finally, Corey Valentine, the second highest graded corner for the Packers so far, although, again, only 80 snaps, but a 66.5. Looking at receptions allowed, we see for Rasul Douglas, he's allowed 13 receptions on 21 targets for 151 yards, two touchdowns. He has one interception, three passes broken up, and allows a 95.5 pass rate. So although Rasul Douglas has been the highest graded corner for the Packers, he's still also allowing a 95.5 pass rating and has allowed uh, 13 receptions on 21 targets. So it hasn't even been that great. Jair Alexander has allowed six receptions on eight targets, for, but remember this is only in two games for 103 yards, a touchdown. He has two pass breakups and has been allowing 156 point three pass rating when you go into Jair that's mainly because of week two because Drake London definitely got the better of him Jair played pretty well against the Chicago Bears but week two against Atlanta I mean I feel like every time they threw to Drake London he was able to come down with the ball and Jair just had a very very bad performance so it's a small sample size not saying Jair is bad or anything of that case or he's going to continue to be bad um, we'll see what happens when he comes back from this injury uh, so again small sample size just two games but that game against Atlanta definitely brings his grade way down. Then we see Carrington Valentine, who has allowed two receptions on six targets for 53 yards and a 66.7 pass rating. Keyshawn Nixon has allowed a whopping 14 receptions on 16 targets. So it seems like every time he gets targeted, it's a catch outside of two times. 119 yards, a touchdown, his one pass breakup, and has allowed a 118.5 pass rating. Valentine has allowed four receptions on six targets for 50 yards, one pass breakup, and a 92.4 pass rating. So outside of Carrington Valentine, who's only been targeted six times, every single other Packers cornerback has allowed over a 90.0 passer rating. So it's safe to say this cornerback room has been underperforming significantly, and I think that really is hurting this defense. Now, many things are hurting this defense. They can't stop the run. The only thing they're really doing consistently is rushing the passer, which they are good at, but they're pretty terrible at stopping the run. They haven't been great in the past game, and I'm actually quite surprised that we're talking about the cornerback group right now in week five rather than the safety room. Like, I've actually been pretty impressed with Darnell Savage. He's had his ups and downs, but he seems like he's playing um, better this year. Like, it seems like he's read and react, not thinking too much and just playing the game, which is exactly what you want Darnell Savage to do. And I've been impressed with Rudy Ford these last two weeks. Kind of a rough start with the first two weeks, but the last two weeks has been one of the better Packers defenders when you're looking at overall on that defense. So getting back Eric Stokes and hopefully he starts to practice in some capacity this week. And who knows if we'll get him back against the Raiders. My best guess is maybe they wait, just wait until after the bye for Eric Stokes. I feel like that's going to be the case for a lot of our injured players right now, such as Elton Jenkins and some other guys they're just going to wait until after the bye and when they head to Denver after that bye week but hopefully we do start to see Eric Stokes at least start practicing at least in individuals this week and they can start to ease him back into that defense and you know he was kind of an underrated player last year when you look at the advanced analytics for Eric Stokes um, he actually performed pretty well last year I know a lot of people thought he was pretty terrible last year but before that injury I thought he did pretty well so getting him back in that cornerback room will also offer them a lot of versatility where say they want to put Jair in the slot and have Stokes and Rasul on the outside. Kind of what we thought we'd be able to do if Carrington Valentine continued to play like his preseason self, but that hasn't been the case. The snaps he's got, the 80 snaps he's got so far, and of course also that biceps injury. So it will be nice to get Eric Stokes back for sure. But that about does it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys an update on Eric Stokes. I know a lot of people have been asking every injury report, what about Eric Stokes? What about Eric Stokes? Well, he was on PUP, so he couldn't even begin practicing until this week. So we'll see if he does start practicing, and that'll all be here right on this channel so definitely go down and click subscribe if you haven't already because i post every single injury report on this channel going over them and all the injury statuses and designations will be right here on this channel and also definitely go download the mojo fantasy app in the description below to enter in the signed full-size lucas van ness packers helmet but that about does it for this one i'll catch you on the next one and as always go pack go